welcome to Sarah's Stampin' and Treat. Today we're going to be having a fun video where we're going to look at some of the monthly subscriptions that Altenew offer and then we'll be using them to make some cards. So I've got five different subscriptions to show you and so we'll be making five cards and there's lots of different things to play with so we'll be using different techniques so it's just going to be a really fun video showing different cards and different techniques. So this first set is Altenew's Build a Garden subscription and so I've got this Morning Asters stamp set, Coordinating Die set, the Coordinating Stencil as well and one of their mini blending tools. So I'm really excited to try this out because I have never used one of their mini blending tools and it looks really good. You can see it's got quite a short small end to it um, but it is bristles like a blending brush as opposed to um, one of the foam tools so I'm looking forward to seeing how that works so to start with for this card I'm going to use this large flower from the set and you can see there's a couple of ideas just there and actually I'll show you the little guide that you get in with it as well so you can see that you get an idea for a card and another one here and then also there's the layering guide for the stencils there as well. So I'm going to ink up my stamp. And I'm just using my stamp positioning tool. Just in case I want more than one layer of ink. See how it stamps first time. Yeah, I definitely want some more on there. And then I'm going to use the stencils to colour the flower. So stencils all have a really faint number in the corner. I don't know if you can see that. I think you can see that on the camera. So this is number one, so I'm going to line that up. Now I'm going to use these pink inks for this. So I've got pink diamond, pink alicious, rubellite and razzleberry. I've not worked out how many of them I'll need, so I might not need all of them. You could take this down if you're worried about it slipping, but I'm just going to because it's quite a small area, I'm just going to go in with, with my hands. So I'm just pressing this in a circular motion on to my stamp pad just to pick up some ink. You can see I've got it part way on but I want it all over the, the brush. And then I'm just going to transfer that onto here. I actually really like the feel of this brush. Because the other blending brushes I've got are the ones with the handles that you kind of do from this angle. This feels more like using, you, you can use the same grip as you do on like a pencil. Which I think feel gives you a bit more control. So obviously each of the slots on here is for a different flower. So you could do all the flowers different colours but I'm actually going to do them all the same colour. So you can see then that all three of these sections line up together so I can do those all at once. And you'll notice that I'm kind of stenciling around the edge. I'm not worried if a bit of pink goes um, into the middle, but I'm not actively colouring it pink because I'm going to have that as a yellow centre or maybe like orange. And again, this smaller brush kind of gives you a bit more control over that as well. With one of my big brushes, I wouldn't be able to kind of make that distinction. And with this one, I'm kind of doing more at the bottom where I want it to be darker. So I think I'm going to do all the layers of the actual flowers to get all the pinks out of the way and then I'll come back and do the um, leaves even though they're on the same stencil. So then I'm going to go in with number two. So I'm going to use this pink alicious. I'm going to use that to add some extra pink around these sections. And you can see that's added an extra layer of colour. I think it almost is starting to look a little bit watercoloured now, actually. And then I'll use the rubellite to add this next layer. And I'm grabbing a piece of spare paper, scrap paper, just to clean this off on because I don't want the pink transferring to my next colour. I've only got one of these blending brushes. I'm really enjoying using it. So I'm just going to try and get most of the pink off so that I can use my next colour. And you can see that's coming out 
without colour now. So even though it looks pink on here, the pink's not transferring to the paper. I'm going to use that for the next colour now. But I really like this and I think because they do some um, blending brushes that are really fine, which I think having used this I might need to invest in because they would be really good for doing these bits without getting like the pink in the middle because I do want to go over that pink with a different colour. I'm also just going to wash my stencil because you can see it's got pink on. I want to do the centres in like yellow or orange now. So um, I'm just going to go and give those a rinse and pat them dry before I do the next layer. So then I'm going to line these back up again and actually this is also a good way to know what side you need to use because you need the number to be up. I've just tried to line it up with the number down and obviously it doesn't work. So I've got Citrus Burst and Sun Kissed ink. So I'm going to go in with the Citrus Burst in the centre bit. And where I was saying before that I might invest in their very fine um, brushes, this is the kind of thing that they would be perfect for because then you wouldn't get this kind of bit of yellow around the outside. I think it actually looks fine but be more accurate without it. And I'm going to use my sun-kissed ink to do that extra bit of detail. And you'll see as well that there are actually the layering stencils for this smaller flower as well. So you've got the stencils for both of them to colour. And there's also a stencil for extra leaves as well. So I'm going to do my leaves with this set of greens. So we've got Bamboo, Parrot, Olive and Moss inks. Um, I don't know if I'll need all of them, but I've got them ready. So I'm going to start with number one. And I'm going to start with the bamboo because that's the lightest ink. And the stencils are actually st set up really nicely as well. So you can kind of just do them without masking, especially because I'm using the, um, the small blending brush that comes with it. I can set it up really nicely. Um, I don't need to... Um, like mask off any areas because I'm just not going to go over them. You can see I'm not even going close to the next pieces. And then this piece just goes here. And you can see that goes all the way up to these bits as well. And the nice thing about these um, subscriptions as well is that you can choose the type of thing you'd like to do. Like you'll see as we go through subscriptions that I've got, there's hot foiling, there's just plain stamp sets, there's kits, we've got all sorts of different things so we'll be doing lots of different techniques as we go through today's video. So if you find that there's something that you don't love just skip it and go to the next one because you're sure to find something in the video that you do love. So then I think this might be the only other layer for the leaves. So I'll use the parrot for this. And you can see it gives a nice added dimension to the leaves. And if you get stuck at any point, you can always use the layering guide in the stamp set to help you. It shows you exactly which parts of each stencil are for which parts on each of the stamps. And then like I say, this fourth stencil is like a bonus. It's just an additional leaf stencil. And then I just want to colour these bits around the outside. So I'm just going to use my Maple Yellow Ultra New Artist Marker and I'm going to use the chisel tip end. I'm just going to go around there. So now I'm just going to use my coordinating die just to cut that out. So here's my die cut flower, so I really like that. And then you can see how this card's going to layer up. I've got a 5x5 five five inch teal card blend. And then I've layered on a piece of matte gold cardstock from Sizzix and that is four and a quarter inches and then I've got a four inch square piece of the same teal cardstock. So I want this to go at the bottom and I want the sentiment to sit here. So I'm just going to pop that into my stamp position and like that. So then I want to heat emboss the sentiment, so I'm just going to use my Versamark ink. And I use my Ultra New Antique Gold Embossing Powder. 
it's really important to use a nice quality like fine embossing powder for this kind of thing because otherwise you're going to end up losing the definition on the letters you can see on that you can read the letters just fine even though they're really delicate so then i'm going to heat that up and you can just see how nicely that lettering comes out with that fine embossing powder so then i want my flower to blend more into the background so i'm going to outline it i think with this galactic stream i think that's the closest color i've got so I'm bringing in some paper because I don't want to get the alcohol marker on my mat because it won't come off. And I'm just going to go around the outline of this flower with this alcohol marker. Normally I use the brush end of these markers, but for this kind of really delicate work, then I use the um, bullet nib. You can see that makes the outline blend much more into that now and it looks almost like the flower is painted onto the paper. It kind of gives a bit of an optical illusion. So now all I've got left to do is just to layer everything up with my glue. So I'm going to glue this on first. Now I use fine tape on the back of here. So then that's that card finished. I'm really pleased with how that turned out. So then the second of the subscriptions that we're going to look at is this Crafter Flower. So this is a die cutting subscription. You can see you get all the dies to create a flower. So this layering guide on the back shows you how to layer it all up as well. And you can see there's quite a lot of dies in that set. So I've done all the die cutting already. And we can use this guide to help us layer it up. It's actually really easy to do because on here... You might not be able to see it on camera, but there's a little kind of almost keyhole and a one next to it. So that's the first one. And then here's the little keyhole with the two. So I'm going to add a bit of glue onto there. And then, so I actually added that on the wrong side. I need to add it on here. So the one goes there. So I'm going to add that around there. And I'm going to add this on top. It doesn't matter that I've got that bit of extra glue on. Um, because I'll put something over it in a second. Um, and you need to line up those two keyholes and that shows you the exact right position to put it in so it's a really clever way of just building them up and then number three goes on top and again I just need to line up that so that keyholes line up you can see that I'm using a range of different blues for mine mostly navy with this slightly brighter blue at the front and so then I've got some of these pieces just to build up on top of it. I've used a selection of kind of yellows and golds for the middle bit. So you can see that that's lined just up over the top of this keyhole here. So I'm just going to line that bit up there. And then we've got this bit next. And that just lines up in the middle there. And then we've got this bit. And then finally we've got this piece that lines up here. You can see then all that keyhole bit that we've used for lining it up is covered. So there's the one flower. And then for this second flower, this one actually starts at zero, so that's that piece there. And then we've got this piece, which is number one, so that lines up on the top. And we've got a kind of arrow instead of a keyhole on this one. Which is good because it's actually a different shape hole to this one, so it makes it really clear which pieces go with which. You can see that only just adds that little bit of shadow there, that zero. And then we've got number two, so let's pop a bit of glue onto that. And number three is this piece here. And you can see even this piece has a bit of a notch, which is like the top of the arrow in it. So all really easy to line up. And I think it makes something that could be quite complex really simple. And then I'm going to add this piece that I've cut in gold. And then I've got this little bright yellow piece here. So there's that. Then I've got my three leaves. And then I've cut the thanks twice. And I'm just going to offset it so that you can see the gold with a bit of navy behind. So then I've got a really simple card structure. So I've got a yellow five 
inch card blank, then a navy four and a half inch mat and a yellow four and a quarter inch mat. So I'm just going to layer those up. So I'm happy with that layout. You can see they've got it like this. I've made it so that it fits better to my card. So you can kind of lay them out how you want. Don't think you only have to stick to that layout because they are all actually separate pieces. And all these layers of card and the texture just makes the flowers really kind of like 3D and they've just got so much texture to them that they look really gorgeous. So then we've got this really lovely dimensional texture card. So the next subscription is the Paint a Flower subscription and this time it's a French Marigold. So I've just got a 5x5 five five inch white card blank and I'm going to position this so that it's on the corner of my card so I'm going to ink that up with my jet black ink those of you who watch my videos regularly will know that the Ulta new jet black ink is my normal kind of everyday black ink because it's a nice dark one and it's nice and crisp I'm going to stamp that once more you have to excuse my plate by the way, I used this in a class where we were using stays on ink and it's gone all over my plate. If anyone knows how to get it off, please drop me a comment below because I have no idea. So then I'm just turning that round and I'm going to do the same in the other corner. So then I'm going to use this sentiment that says thank you for always being there when I need you because that's lovely. And there's some really nice sentiments on this. Our friendship is made of a million little things. It's the friend you can call up at 4am that matter. Um, I like me when I'm with you. There's just the you to, there to be added to things. We've got brighten my day which can you could use you brighten my day. I can be me with you. Missing you. You are so much more than a friend. I'm thinking of you, um, you are my happy. So there's lots of lovely sentiments there that you can kind of mix and match. So then I'm going to make sure that I turn this around the right way because that would be an easy mistake to make. Put it on the wrong way. And then I'm just going to position this sentiment just here. And then I'm going to move this into the middle because I want to position this a bit differently this time because I want it to kind of frame that thank you. And so then I'm going to use the Sunshine Valley Garden set to colour the flowers. I've just realised that I didn't show you earlier, it might be quite nice to see the um, ideas that come in the packaging. So I've got this idea here with the pastel flowers and this idea here with the yellow. So there's a couple of nice ideas of what you can do with them. this um, Mystic Garden set which is a new set from Altino. I'm just going to use the nib end and I'm just going to outline the flowers. You can see this one that I've outlined versus these ones that I haven't yet and I just think it makes it pop that little bit more off the page. So there's that card finished. 
What I usually like to do with cards like this is to stamp them first and maybe stamp a few and then I like to sit and colour them in the evening in front of the TV or listening to my audiobooks because I find the colouring quite therapeutic. So then the next subscription is the Spark Joy Hot Foil Plate Set. So I've got this gorgeous Lily Bouquet Flower and the Coordinating Stencil Set. So I've had my hot foil machine heating up and I've got the Spellbinders Glimmer Machine and I'm just going to take this out. You can see it's quite a big hot foil plate. If you've been following me for a while you'll know that I love hot foiling so I'm really excited to use this. I've not actually had any hot foil plates that have coordinating stencils before so I'm excited to give it a try. So I'm just taping it on using some low tack tape. So I've got my card, which is just some Neela Solar White, my gold foil and the hot plate. And I'm going to put it this way up onto here to heat up. And I'm going to press the timer. When that stays green, it's not flashing anymore, then it's time to take it off and put it through my die cutting machine. So then it comes with two plates, um, but I've got a Sizzix machine, not a Spellbinders machine for um, die cutting so for me what works better is to put a cardstock shim in and then this plate and then I'll just bring in my machine so that you can see I'm just going to slowly wind that through and see that my big shot's been with me for a long long time it's well worn but it's really well used. It's quite a big plate so I'm going to put it through three times just to try and make sure we've got a nice good foil. But then we've got this gorgeous lily and then I'm going to bring in the stencils and you can see this is the packaging from inside the stencils so so you can see what they've done with it. So I'm going to use a selection of pinks. I'm actually going to use the same pinks that we used for the first card. And I'm also going to use that blending brush again that we used for the first card because I really like that. I'm going to use the lightest pink for these flowers up here. And because each area on this stamp only has one layer, I'm actually going to grab my pink alicious as well. I'm just going to add a little bit of detail with the pink alicious. And then I'm also going to use the pink alicious for the lily. And then I'm going to go in with the rubellite and I'm going to add accents to the lily with the rubellite. And then this rose over here, I'm going to do that as the main colour on that. And then I'm going to take the raspberry, and the raspberry will be the accent colour on the rose. And then I'm going to go through that same process again with the other parts of the flower. I'm just going to get the most of this off first, because, it, because we want to go back to the lightest colour again, so I don't want too much dark on there. Again, because I want to use it with greens, 
And then I'm going to use the power with accents of olive for the leaves. And the stencil actually kind of creates natural shadows because you can see it goes a bit darker around the edges. That's actually where the, the flowers would cast a shadow on the leaves anyway. I'm just going to accent it with the olive. So now I'm left with this really gorgeous foiled flower. And I'm actually going to cut that out with my scissors. I'm going to leave a little board around it so that I don't cut into the foil. So then I've got a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card blank. I've got some light navy stamping up ink. I'm just putting some of that onto that block. I'm just going to bring in some scrap paper for this as well. So I'm going to take some water. I'm going to make my brush quite wet. I'm going to just mix that into there. And then I'm going to flick some across my paper. Then I've just got um, a small strip of gold cardstock and a small strip of navy cardstock and I'm just going to glue those together. And then I'm just going to glue that along to the side of my card. And then I'm going to pop my lilies up. And you'll often notice bits and pieces on the back of what I'm doing. And that's usually where I've tried something and maybe it hasn't worked out so well. And then I just turn it over and start again. So I think it's important to remember that everybody makes mistakes. Everybody does things that they're not happy with. And you can always just start again. So I think sometimes it's a bit disheartening when we make mistakes. You kind of want to give up. Or I do anyway. And there's so many amazing cards and amazing designers out there. But you kind of forget that everybody makes mistakes. Everybody does things they're not 100% happy with. And the beauty of card making is that a lot of it is just paper. So you can just turn it over and start again. And then I've cut these things with the dies from the die set that we used earlier. Oh, and actually I want it on the back of the gold one, not the back of the blue one because I want the gold one to go on the top. And I'm just going to offset it just like we did on the card that we made earlier. And I'm going to glue this onto my card. And sometimes it's quite nice just to kind of like hold your sentiment over your card in a few different places to see where you'd like it before you actually stick it down. I'm going to pop mine there. And that blue behind it, you can't see it very well but it does just make it pop that little bit more than it would otherwise. Then there's that card finished. And the final kit is the Eclectic Bouquet Kit. You can see that I've already opened this because I wanted to see what was inside. But I did want you to see how it comes just in this beautiful paper and obviously that was a lovely smooth sticker but I couldn't not have a look inside. So this is the Crafty Life Project Kit and this one's called Eclectic Bouquet and so you get this die set, the coordinating stamp set so it's a nice big stamp set, a coordinating embossing folder and coordinating stencils. So to start with, I'm going to stamp this really nice big flower onto some white cardstock. And actually while I'm taking this out, let me show you the inspiration inside. So this is showing us how the stencils work with it. And then we've got this inspiration for different projects. And this is a really nice way here as well. This flower is just humongous. It's really lovely will really make a big focal point. 
I'm just using some Nina Soda White card stuff. This is the £80. So I'm going to use some yellows for the flowers. So I'm going to do, starting with the first number one stencil, I'm going to use my Citrus Burst. And you kind of choose how much you put on these flowers so you could kind of leave it like this really pale or you could build the colour up a lot and leave it quite pale but towards the edges and pop a bit more in the middle and then I can lay this one over and I'm going to use the sun kissed for this and then I do have leaves on here too I'm going to come back and do the leaves after I've done the flowers so I don't want to keep mixing greens and yellows together. So I'm going to switch to number two. And again I'm going to make it a deeper colour here than here. And then I'm going to line this layer up on here. And I'm going to use Sun Kissed. So I'm going to go back to stencil one and I'm going to colour the leaves. So I'm going to use the moss ink for these ones at the top. And then I'm going to go with number three. And we've got these two here which I'm going to do in the moss. And then I'm going to go a shade lighter and do the less, rest of the leaves in the olive just for a bit of depth. So that's our bouquet coloured and I literally can't tell you how much I love this blending brush. I'm just going to bring back in the Sunshine Valley Garden set and use this honey drizzle just to add a little bit of extra. Just think that colouring in these little bits in the middle will just give it that extra little bit of pop. And you can see as well that this bit of the stencil colours that leaf as well so you've got the stencil for this too I'm going to use this you make my heart smile I'm going to stamp that in black so then I can die cut that at the same time I just need to stamp this a few times just to get the nice stamp because it's in, um, a new stamp so you can see it's not sticking to all the parts of the stamp must be a bit of oil or something from the manufacturing process on it I'm going to just pop some verse marking on and that kind of like preps it a bit because it's a sticky ink and then I'm going to ink this up again. So then here are my die cut pieces. So then what I want to do is I want to put this in here and I want to make sure that it's lined up with the pattern on the embossing folder. Now I'm going to run that through my die cut machine. I feel like this might not be so easy to see on screen but it's actually perfectly embossed that panel just adds that extra bit of dimension to it so I was going to do this like this but actually I think that I might heat emboss this in the gold onto here so I'm going to use the same antique gold embossing powder that I used earlier now I'm just going to heat that up. So you can see my cardstock slightly warped from heat embossing it. So my way around that is to glue it onto the piece behind it. And then I'm going to put a big book on it just to keep it flat for a few minutes. 
And then I'm going to do the same trick I used earlier. I think I'm going to use this Optic Mountain alcohol marker just to colour around the outside of here. So that's from this Mystic Garden set that I was using earlier. And I'm just going to do it on my piece of scrap paper. So you can see that blends really nicely into the background now. So while I've been doing that, this has been drying and you can see that's nice and flat now. So I can glue that onto there and add my flower. I might even actually pop this up on some um, foam tape. So that's that card finished. So there are all of today's cards. I'd love to know which is your favourite. Let me know in the comments below. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and got some inspiration. If you did, I'd appreciate you clicking like below and you can also press subscribe if you'd like to see future videos. If you press the bell button and select all, then YouTube will also notify you when I've got a new video available. All of the products that I've used for today's cards are listed in the description below. You can also find a link to my blog there where you'll find a picture supply list if that helps you find what you're looking for. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you again soon.